Hello all. Welcome to the Make Your Own Hacker Gadget video series at Pen Tester Academy. Now in this video, we are going to be accessing the serial port on the device. Now keep in mind that as such there is no serial interface available on the device as you can clearly see from the outside. Now the question arises why would we even need a serial interface? Now serial interfaces allows us to debug a lot of things happening on the box and this is also typically the way manufacturers might even test their own equipment. At the very same time, if you brick your device, something goes wrong when you do a firmware upgrade, then using the serial interface and with the help of the bootloader, you might still be able to restore and work with your device. And this is where in the world of hardware hacking, serial interfaces and JTAGs and all of that are very, very important. Now, I've taken a screenshot of the device. so you will have to unbox the device. And this is really true unboxing, which is, you know, you will have to open this case up. Uh, in the next slide, I've given you some instructions on how to open the case. This is from the OpenWRT website. So have a look at that. Now, the specific circuit board, the OpenWRT guys are showing, already has the serial pins put in, right? Uh, the one which I've unboxed, unfortunately, does not have serial pins on it, right? I have the connector area, but there aren't any pins there. Now, before we move on, uh, OpenWRT's website has done a lot of hard work for us. We already know the hardware summary. And if this weren't there, then you would open up the box and actually read out all of these chip numbers and then search online to see what this is. So you can clearly see this says uh, Atheros AR9331. And if you've done a bunch of Google searches, you would actually note that it is a Wi-Fi controller chip. And you can get the data sheet, you can get what the different pins, you know, which are connected to the circuit board, uh, are for, you know, which one of these are GPIO pins, which is, you know, general purpose input output. And that could even allow you to interface external devices with this board. Now, we may take that up much, much later uh, in this series. But for now, what is sufficient to know is really the hardware summary. Now, the processor is an AR7240. AR is basically the Atheros uh, company abbreviation, you have a flash ROM, and the chip, which is actually the Wi-Fi controller, is the AR9331. Now, this also will come in handy when you're going to be compiling, let's say, OpenWRT from scratch, where you would need to ensure that this board is supported. Now, there is a serial console, as we mentioned, and basically there are four pins. TX is basically uh, for sending, RX is for receiving. This is transmit, receive, ground, and VCC, right? Now, you can unbox the circuit board using these instructions. Go slow. There's a high chance you might end up breaking the circuit board uh, if you use too many sharp instruments or if you are in a hurry. Now, my recommendation is if you can afford, probably get a bunch of these. I've gotten around four or five of these so I can play with them for this video series. Okay, now this is my circuit board. I've unboxed it, but I've taken some pictures so that you know you can see it up close because I'm not sure about the resolution of this camera. Now, if you clearly notice, and by the way, you know, just let me know on Twitter what your circuit board has. Mines do not have the header pins already put in for serial, right? This is where the serial is. This is the TX, this is the RX, this is ground, and this is VCC or power. Uh, I don't know the resolution. 
but here is how this would look like now this brings us to an interesting problem which we would need to solve which is we, we need to add the header pins ourselves right so you can order headers online uh, i ordered a bunch of them and eventually my colleague ashish went ahead and broke these up so that i could just have three as shown on the picture i'm i'm sure this is a pretty bad resolution but hey here you go this is how it looks like Uh, i can see that in the picture in here now you basically have two options option 1 is to place the header pins on the board and to solder them right uh, this would require a soldering iron uh, you would also require you know soldering wire and all of that stuff so what i did however is i did not solder it i went ahead and placed the pins in the reverse direction as you can see uh which would be somewhat like this if you guys can see this just it's also there in the picture trying my best so that you can get the best of both worlds but i'm not sure how much i must be succeeding till the time i actually shoot uh, and view the video so what i've actually done is i've placed the header pins like this so that i can connect a cable in here right now this is probably not a good configuration because if there is any loose connections and you're transferring a firmware right or if you even decide to overwrite <clears throat> the bootloader uh, you'd probably permanently break your device uh, so you might want to solder it if you like i didn't choose to solder it but that's just my preference right i've placed the pins in an inverted way just so that they can lock up here and now i'm actually going to use a usb to ttl cable so this cable can be bought pretty much in any country uh, if you're based in the us you can go ahead and order them from ada fruit i think it's, it's again pretty cheap i don't know how much but probably less than 10 dollars right this is how the cable looks like and this will go inside our usb this actually contains a converter chip in there uh, which would actually do the whole you know usb to ttl serial a lot of people even like to build their own circuit for this but you know i'm trying to reduce the amount of electronics we have to do we might do a hardware hacking purely from an electronics perspective later if you think that would be interesting just tweet out to us on twitter Hmm. Too much of coffee. <laughs> okay. Now the connections, right? So I've already shown you the board, and on my board, if you notice, the one pin which says P1 is actually the TX pin or the transmit pin. The next one is the RX or receive, and then you have ground, and then you have power. This is very, very, very important. right keep this in mind go through these steps very slowly now if you look at your cable you'll actually see that there are four cables in there four different colors right the green as we can see in the image is for tx the white is for rx black is for ground and red is for power Now this board is already powered i don't need to go ahead and power it but i need to definitely put in the ground pin so that we have a common ground right this is how this looks like so let me go ahead and do the same in here so that i can show you guys now i found that even without soldering once i clip on these pins uh i get a decent connection right but do it at your own risk the recommended procedure of course is to solder it so let me put these pins connected with the cable there we go uh just like in the image this is how this would look like right now 
you go right the red wire is the only one which is unused at this point and if you successfully done this then you basically have serial connectivity to your device now in the next video we will look at how to access the bootloader using this serial connection right so hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you're having fun at pen tester academy please do recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the infosec community thank you